Captain Midnight. This video is brought to you by Nebula. So I decided to make this video on Disney Plus because of a mostly forgotten Netflix show from almost a decade ago, 2013's Hemlock Grove, one of Netflix's first forays into scripted TV, arriving shortly after Lilyhammer and House of Cards. It wasn't critically well received, it generated very little buzz, but it still managed to last three seasons before becoming one of the streamer's very first cancellations. This past week, it was revealed that Netflix is actually removing the show from its service altogether. And even though I never actually liked Hemlock Grove, that kind of struck a sad note for me. I've always had a special fascination with cancelled television shows. Shows that had big visions that they were just never able to quite realize, ones that fell flat, or maybe just promising shows that were tossed aside by the network or streamer quickly after release. With places like NBC, FX, and even now Netflix, who have been around for a bit, they have countless cancelled shows in their history. Disney Plus, though, is kind of in an interesting position because it's fairly new. Like Netflix back in 2015, we're now seeing what shows in their early slate are just going to be left behind. I find all of that pretty fascinating, especially with streaming services who are very tight-lipped about ratings and really only release numbers when it's in their best interest to. So in this video, I want to go over these confirmed cancelled shows and talk about what their cancellations say about the state of Disney Plus and what does and doesn't seem to be working for them. Before I get into it though, I will say this is not a Marvel or Star Wars heavy list, for a couple reasons. Most of those shows are short miniseries that weren't intended to have a season 2, or at least that's what they say, and even the lesser known ones get far more buzz than the regular old TV shows that I really wanted to dig into here. So with all that out of the way, let's go over the scripted Disney Plus shows that have already been cancelled since its launch in 2019. I want to start with a weird one that may not technically count, but I think is a really interesting example of how Disney Plus has already changed a ton since launch. Lizzie McGuire For those who don't know, a Lizzie McGuire revival that brought back most of the original cast and showrunner was not only being worked on, it was actively in production, and they'd filmed at least one episode. I talked about this in one of my first videos on Disney Plus years ago, but basically the studio thought that the show was a little too edgy and adult for their service. Which I think makes a lot of sense considering the show would now be about people in their 30s and not pre-teens. But even having approved and shot the scripts, the show was scrapped before it was even released. I think that demonstrated some very short-sighted planning on Disney's part. Because not only have we now seen iCarly revived fairly successfully, aimed at a slightly older audience, and getting renewal after renewal on Paramount+, Plus. Disney Plus is now a service where you can watch The Punisher Show, or Logan. There's clearly a place for non-family oriented stuff on the service, and it didn't even take them all that long to make the change. Which sort of leaves the Lizzie McGuire revival as an odd chapter in the early, ultra kid friendly days of the service. The next show on the list is one that ran for two seasons on Disney Plus before being quietly cancelled in late 2021, Diary of a Future President. This was a show where the President of the United States, played by Jane the Virgin's Gina Rodriguez, recounts her childhood diary entries, basically taking the form of a sitcom for kids and families. Sort of like the framing device for The Sandlot, except she's the President and not a baseball announcer. The only thing that really makes the show notable on this list, I think, is that it's not based on any pre-existing thing. In my opinion, this is a really under-discussed aspect of Disney+, Plus. just how much trouble their original programming has had breaking out. This might seem like an obvious point, I know, but I think it's really telling. Where Disney Plus can get a lot of viewership and discussion from things like the MCU and Star Wars shows, they've never really had a Stranger Things, or even a Succession or Yellowstone in terms of popularity. Not that all those shows are equally popular, they're definitely not, but they have all made a successful name for themselves without having to be based on a giant, multi-decade brand. Disney Plus hasn't really been able to pull anything like that off, despite there being a surprising number of original shows on the platform. They are having better luck internationally, with the Korean drama Snowdrop apparently being a big hit, but their original US productions just aren't having the same luck. So I'm curious to see if Disney Plus keeps trying to make them work and maybe make some more adult-oriented originals, or if cancellations like this just make them more likely to double down on things like Marvel, Star Wars, Pixar, and The Simpsons. 
Those are all huge names, obviously, but I think one of the world's biggest streamers should be able to come up with beloved shows of their own, not just have to lean on pre-existing classics. In this specific show's instance though, I do think coming out in January 2020 instead of at launch kind of hurt it. The high school musical show aimed at a similar audience not only has the benefit of being a well-known name, it was also getting a lot of press right at launch. Future President didn't really get that benefit. But being a remake or revival doesn't guarantee success. A good example of that might just be Disney Plus's most high profile cancellation, Turner and Hooch, starring Josh Peck. Based on Tom Hanks' 1989 light comedy about a cop who has to work alongside a big slobbery dog, Disney Plus's Turner and Hooch somehow makes the original film feel like it has the gritty realism of The Wire by comparison. But with a completely bland, sterile tone, and a look that feels more like a phone commercial, I'm not surprised that Turner and Hooch really failed to connect. It's also a really weird hybrid of a reboot and a revival. Like clearly, it's just trying to be a reboot. It's about a young, uptight cop, a big goofy dog. They weren't exactly reinventing the wheel here. But at the same time, there's this really strained connection to the original movie where Peck's character, Scott Turner Jr., inherits a big dog from his dead dad, who's Tom Hanks' character. I'm not sure anyone was clamoring for another Turner and Hooch, especially not one that confirms that the main character of the movie is now very dead, but I'm sure Disney Plus thought it would be an easy property to pull off on a TV budget. Unfortunately though, everything about it is just as uninspired as you could get. Other Disney Plus revivals, like the mediocre Mighty Ducks one, kind of have a similar problem. I feel like the things they're based on were never realistic or grounded, but they didn't look and feel so glossy and plastic, which is something that plagues these modern Disney projects constantly. Ultimately though, I think Turner and Hooch is maybe the worst offender of that. Now there was a chance that retooling the show in season 2 could have turned it around, but as it stands, I completely get why this was the revival that got the axe. My issues with the terrible Turner and Hooch show aside, I didn't make this video just to pick on these few shows. I did it because I think when you zoom out, they make a compelling case study for the kinds of shows that are really going to struggle on Disney+. Plus. In Lizzie McGuire's case, it was the creator of the original show trying something that was apparently too edgy for Disney, something that differed too much from the safe brand that they wanted to maintain there. In A Diary of a Future President, you see one of the few scripted new shows on the service not based on an existing IP, which seems to be a massive uphill battle as the company pours more and more money into Marvel and Star Wars. And finally, in Turner and Hooch, you have a show that's trying to revive a hit from decades ago and just failing to hit the target at all. Whether because there's not much name value there anymore, the show was just too bland to hook people, or most likely a mixture of both. All of these shows, and their cancellations, I think show the weak points of Disney+, Plus, or at least they point to things worth changing. When it comes to new original shows, especially ones that garner generally good reviews, maybe promote them more and don't let them get buried under the avalanche of well-known IP. And when it comes to stuff like Turner and Hooch, maybe don't greenlight a show based on name value alone. At the end of the day, we're talking about one of the biggest streaming services in the world here, and I'm really hoping that it can eventually be home to exciting new stuff, not just Marvel, Star Wars, and endless updates of old family films. I also think the service having a healthy lineup of new original programming would benefit Marvel and Star Wars in the end, as the service's success wouldn't entirely depend on leaning on those two as often as possible. I've read a lot of articles in the past couple of years about how all these streamers want a squid game of their own. But to find a new show like that, Disney Plus will need to be a lot more adventurous and a lot more willing to take creative risks than what their originals have shown us so far. If you enjoyed this, please check out the rest of my videos, including some exclusive ones on Nebula Ad Free. Nebula has proven to be really great for creators because it allows people to experiment, to try things that maybe don't work with what the algorithm on here seems to demand. And I'm far from alone on Nebula, with creators like H Bomber Guy, Cinema Wins, Windover Productions, and so many more having all made great and interesting exclusive content for the service. I mean, Patrick H. Willems even made an entire movie. 
What I love about Nebula is that it's creator driven first, which I think will always make for a better viewing experience. So sign up for Nebula using my link in the description for just $3 a month. I mean, come on, $3? It's a great deal. Plus it's only 30 for the entire year. You can find all of that in the description or pinned comment below. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.